What's up Madden 20 gamers? My name is Cody. I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today's video we're going to be doing a quick breakdown for you on a play that I or on a uh, on a scheme here that I worked on uh, a lot actually and it's out of the West Coast playbook. Now a lot of you have probably ran some West Coast at some point and the most popular um, the most popular formation is the gun bunch. And so the gun bunch, this is something I wanted to talk a little bit about today. I want to give you a couple of different resources here with this. And I want to talk a lot about this playbook because this is the playbook that I use next to the Arizona Cardinals playbook. And there's one other playbook, the Oakland Raiders playbook that I really like. But I want to talk about these little two back sets over the course of the next couple of videos. The near close, near close flex, near, near wide left, all of these little plays here. And the reason I want to talk about this is because if you're looking for, we all know in Madden 20, running the ball is really effective this year. And so with when you when you want to work the clock a little bit, you can actually check down into this. And this is one of the one one of the only weaknesses to the Cardinals playbook, in my opinion, because the Cardinals playbook, you don't really have a good running set. You don't have a good red zone set. And I love the spread. And I'll probably still run Arizona. But I wanted to give you this video series on the West Coast just to give you some insight into what could be possible if you want to run some under center stuff. This is something I've been working on for a long time. So this is the a formation. My favorite formation in Madden history is this one right here. This is the first, the far tight slot out of the West Coast playbook. The reason this is my favorite formation is this is the first ever formation this is where it became real for me. In Madden 2011, this was the formation that I kind of really mastered. And, and I, don't, I wouldn't say I mastered it, but I studied it and studied it and committed to it. And that's the first thing I want to encourage you. With any scheme that you run, it can work if you commit to it. Okay, any scheme you run can work if you commit to it. So I just want to give you a quick... Um, a quick mini scheme, mini series here on the far tight slot. So the audibles that you're gonna you're gonna want is all you need to do is take bench switch and you want to make that the curls play. For your substitutions, what I do, um, I run the with the 49ers when I run the scheme, and I put Raheem Mostert as the fullback, and then you can run with Tevin Coleman, but I typically will put Matt Breida right there on the other side. For my wide receivers, I want my um, I want my best receiver to be in the slot. So I'm going to take Emmanuel Sanders and I'm going to make him a slot receiver. And then I'm going to run with Marquise Goodwin just because he's got good speed. And then obviously George Kittle. So that's how you want to kind of set up your subs. Now, there's a lot of really, really good plays in here. But we're going to talk about just a, just a few of them. The first play we're going to talk about today is the fullback dive. Now, the fullback dive, what I like about it is this is the run that really sets everything up. Now... The only problem with the far tight slot is it seems like every Madden it's actually gotten smaller or less plays. And that's a little bit of an issue because you you don't have what when I was running it in Madden 2011, you had a quick pitch to the left and you had a power sweep to the right so you could run left, you could run right and you could run middle. In this year's game, you basically can only run HB dive. And if you watch here, HB dive, I'm just going to sweep him out. And you see, you can run, you can run a little bit outside with that, but not really. The fullback dive, and the fullback dive this year is, in my opinion, really, really up there for a short yardage play. It's almost guaranteed that you're going to get a couple yards. It's really hard to stop the middle run this year. Uh, a lot of people are running stretch. I've ran stretch, and I'm actually going to give you a scheme in the future on how you can really master the stretch because it's, it's based out of a series that I'm going to do about Mike Shanahan and Kyle Shanahan. But I really think this year, if you're just talking Madden, this fullback dive, and not just this one from this set, there's some other ones we're going to talk about from the West Coast, but it literally is so difficult to stop. And so I'm just going to share with you two different ways you can run this. The first way is you can, you can play maker. So if you watch here, He's going to hand it off to the left, and he's going to come left. Now, you can use the, with the uh, – if you don't hold turbo when you first get the ball and you just steer him with the left stick wherever you want him to go, I think you can actually turn this one run into a run right, a run left, and a run inside and outside of both sides. So 
here I'm going to show you. So I'm going to re just reset it. But you see here it shows him pointing to the right. Watch where the running quarterback is going to hand it to the left. Okay? Quarterback hands it to the left. So what I'm saying is when you look at your play art, if you flip it to the left, or I mean if you flip it to the right, you see how his play art's going to change? But watch, the quarterback hands it off to the right. Okay? Now, you can run this. We're going to get a little deep here on this play. You can run this right or left. It doesn't... I don't think... Some people will tell you there's a better... You know, you want to run it right or left. Or some, some people will tell you always run it left. Some people will tell you always run it right. I'm going to say you can run it either way. What I want you to understand is this slot receiver right here, what you don't want to have happen is you don't want that slot receiver to block the defensive end or the defensive lineman. So if I run it left, watch. You, you see how he engages him there? You see how he gets that left guy? The reason that you don't want that to happen is because what's going to happen is if I run left, you'll see he'll block shed him every time. He will, if I try to get outside, he's going to block shed him every single time. And this is what I'm talking about, about having a run that goes not only inside, but also to the left. So what I do, and this actually sets up the scheme really nicely, but I motion him out to the left. When I motion him out to the left, you'll see a much better running lane up the middle. You'll also notice, you'll also notice, and I'll just do this a couple different times, you'll also notice that they typically will follow him, and I can actually kind of slide... And this is, this is, again, really critical that you don't use turbo. You don't use turbo until you're out until you're out of, the, out of the clutter of the defense. But when they got a guy out there, that linebacker, you'll see here. And there you see there's the power of that run. What happens is that left tackle is now the guy that you're going to read. You're going to read the left tackle. Does the left tackle take the outside guy? If there's someone outside of the left tackle, he's going to hold the contain. Okay, he's going to hold the contain. Your job is to basically read that left tackle and say, should I go outside or inside? So here, right in this little chute here, as you can see. So that's going to that's gonna give you a really, really nice alley to run through if you run it left. When you run it left, real quick, you want to motion that receiver out, and then you want to slide through the hole, as you can see there. Now, again, I'm just running it against random defenses um, because I want to show you many different looks here. But you'll see, this is a consistent five yards. This is consistent. This isn't like one time only. And um, in a second, what I'll do is I'll show you. Um, and there you see, with good blocking and with good user stick, this is a really hard run to stop. Really hard run to stop. And now watch, if I just leave that guy there, you'll see here. I mean, it still works. It still works. Don't get me wrong. But... It doesn't work as good because if you try to break it outside, you see, I mean, there I got it. There I got out. But what I've found just over time running this, it works a little bit better if you motion that receiver. Um, if I motion him to the right, watch what happens here. Now they've got a plus one advantage on the left side. So basically what I do is I use that slot receiver to take the safety. And then I use, or I use my slot receiver motion him out. He's going to take that corner. And then, and then you see here, I can, I can kind of ease around and, and wheel out. So when you're thinking about blocking assignments, this is kind of one of those plays where you're thinking your, your wide receiver is going to block the corner. And you just want to get a good matchup on that defensive end because if you can win that defensive end block, this run is going to work really well for you. Now, all of the, everything I just said, when you run it to the right, what I want to show you um, is when you run it to the right here, You'll see, um, you can go a little bit more, a little bit more right up the middle, and you don't necessarily have to motion the receiver. So if you watch that running back here, he's going to help kind of take you right up the middle, and that's a good, that's a good run as well. Now, what I will say with this side, when you're running it to the right, you don't have as much of an opportunity to break it outside as you do when you run it left, because the tight end is almost. The tight end is, because he's split to the tight, he's always going to push that guy outside. That's just the way the, the way the play works. He is going to naturally want to push that guy outside. So I'll show you here. Just try to bounce it out. And you'll see I'm going to run right into him. He's going to chip him to the outside and then he's going to go up. So if you want to run outside to the right, 
it's really not going to happen on this play. That's what I was saying about wishing we had a power sweep. You know, I'll show you the dive here. So here, if I try to get outside, you see I can actually have a little bit more of an opportunity to get outside with the dive than I do with the um, than I do with the other way around. And I'll show you with the dive, you can't playmaker it either way. He's always going to do that. And the problem with the dive is the fullback. If you're going to run the dive, hear me very clearly. You need to. It's literally a sweep. You need to run the dive as if it was a sweep to the right because the fullback, the lead blocker on this play is going to want to pull you outside. And as you can see, it's just not it's just not a consistent play for me. So when I run this in real game, I don't typically have the dive in my audibles. Here you see, but when you get outside, it can break. So, but anyways, the run is really effective this year. Let me show you one other thing on the fullback dive. This is just one other key thing. So I will motion the slot receiver Sanders. I motion him left and right for all of my pass plays. There's different plays I have that go to the right. There's different plays that I have that motion left. So when I motion him, it's not uncommon. If I motion him left here, watch what happens. Here, I can come, I, it's, you know, the dive is still the same. So you want to keep that consistent motion, whether you're running the dive right or you're running the dive left. Um, when you motion him out, like I said, if you try to break this out, you're typically going to get hung up right there. That block shut's pretty consistent. Um, the only thing that might, if I motion the tight end out like this, I might have a little bit better of a shot, but you see there, you see there, it's not going to break as good. Um, not just not, not really a good look, but if I take this receiver and I motion him out side right there, you see now I've got a guy, if I motion him out to the right. You'll see I have a guy now to block the corner. So if I go out, you see I have a little bit a little bit more of a block block set up there. But what I'm going to recommend you do is motion him right in here and snap him right there. And he's going to go up and get some linebackers for you or safety. So, again, you don't want to read. You're not following the receiver. Do not hear me say that, that you're going to follow the receiver. You're still reading the play as is. And you're going to cut to the open grass. Okay. But you now have someone that's going to be able to, um, that's going to be able to block your, um, you know, whoever in that, in that, in that side, he's going to oftentimes what he's going to do. And I wonder if there's a way actually, now that I'm thinking about it, if I motion him this way, if I snap him right there, he's going to basically hold the corner. The corner is going to be in a man assignment on him so if you wanted to you could actually you know and then you could also go back left so there's just a lot you can do with this run this run is really powerful and i would say if you're going to run this offense if you're going to run this formation consistently this is one of those runs that you want to run fairly fairly consistently because of how effective it is and how consistently you're literally going to walk forward. I want to show you real quick before we end the video. Uh, I want to show you how this sets up against 3-4 odd cover 4. Because that's what most defenses are going to try to do against this. So they're going to come out 3-4 odd. And they're going to come out and they're going to come out and cover 4. But what we'll do for this video is I'll just show you engage 8. So that's engage eight. You know, this is like an all-out sellout against this run right here. And you'll see it just breaks. And there's a lot of times when they sell out to stop this, you'll see in gameplays what I do with this. They'll just, I mean, you'll just you'll just go to the house. Okay? But this year running is so effective. I I, I again I want to encourage you to. Um, to try this out, one other option you can do is if you motion the running back out wide like this, and you can get creative with the motions and things like that, but there's just a lot of things you can do. But that quick hitting run play, that quick hitting dive play, I'm telling you guys, it's one of the best one of the best runs in the game, if not the best run in the game, because with that motion out of the receiver, you just get a different block. You get a much better blocking on the safety and on the corner 
And then, as you see there, he just, like, launches right at that safety. Gives me that seal block to get to the end zone. But anyway, and then if I run right, let me show you that one more time. If I run right, I have a little bit more challenge. But let me just show you. And I just have to find the lane. And what's interesting is if they blitz all, like if I run right, what you can do, watch. I can actually cut back left because of that left stick. One other thing you want to do when you get the handoff, you want to hold left trigger when you get the handoff just to kind of give them, a, give them a little bit of a gather step. But if they're blitzing all out, you'll see you just want to follow your blockers right through the hole. Now, one of the things that you can do, as you can see, he's blitzing that safety, which is, again, this is probably something that you won't see. But if you motion that receiver out like that right there, that's going to clean that block up. Um, so if they start blitzing those linebackers, if you motion Sanders this way right here, you're going to be able to slip right through it. I didn't get a good read, didn't get a good block there. Let me show you. This is like sellout run defense. This is what they're going to do to try to stop you. But you'll see. And I'm still falling forward for two, three yards of a pop. Um, but you'll see if they blit, if you're getting heavy blitzes, what I'm going to recommend is run it left because, and I'm going to show you, and then one last thing, and then we'll be done for the day uh, after this. I want to show you three, four, I'd cover four. But if they're, if they're, if they're blitzing you middle, if you run it left, you can easily just wheel it outside and, and you're good. Um, you're going to have a little bit more of a hard time wheeling it out on the, on the right side, just the way the game play, just the way that play develops it doesn't pop as much on the right here's cover four and here's that motion out there and you see that's a little bit better at containing the outside because they're in zones they're not blitzing and that's kind of how you you know that's kind of how you contain the outside this year is through the curl flats but you can see i can literally just walk right up the middle just walk right up the middle now what people will do is they'll blitz the middle guys and then they'll have that contain out there and again i still think you're going to be fine you're still going to be fine. And as you can see, what I like to do is put my best blockers at left tackle. And then maybe at center. But, and then here's right. Let me show you right here. But you're going to you're gonna literally just walk forward for five. And if you read the hole right, typically what's going to happen in a 3-4 odd, even if they pinch everybody in, you're going to go right in behind there. And as you, if you can watch, if you can watch this play develop, you want to watch that tight end. If you're running right, you're watching the tight end block. And you're just kind of, you can easily, and there you see I can I can get outside if I get a good block by that tight end. Um, if I don't get a good block by the tight end, I'm going to have, I'm going to struggle. But right in there, as you can see, I can slide right through it. So, again, all I want you to hear from me in this video is this is one of the best runs in the game. This is a really good short yardage run. Um, as you can see there, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit more off tackle with it. But with the, with the total control that you get this year with running the ball and the way the game plays, you have a really good opportunity with this to hold left trigger when you snap the ball, make a quick decision of where you're going to go, make a quick, quick read, and then just explode through the read. I wouldn't hold turbo until you're literally in the open field because if you hold turbo, it makes it a lot harder to cut back. But once you hit turbo, it's going to explode. You're going to explode. So, anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you enjoy this play. I hope you can add it to your repertoire. And, again, this is just a simple little play. Tomorrow, we're going to show you um, how to kind of leverage this little quick snap throw.